The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX like we usually do. I posted the two different charts showing the three drive to a bottom one. The second one is very informative, post, uh, folks. We had a 150-point move up, 150-point move down, and it's going back up again, uh, holding its own in here. This is really good price action for a bottom. We've seen this pattern before. And it certainly looks like there's a bottom forming in the German DAX. We've seen it on the longer term time frame, too. So we need to keep a very close eye on that, especially with all the news coming out of Washington, which uh, this morning early is not very good. Now, if we take a look uh, at the uh, FTSE, you'll notice on the FTSE, you're looking at a four-hour chart that covers the last several months. And you'll notice we went down. We completed the ABCD pattern here. We rallied about 60 points off that bottom. So that is holding also. My assumption is, and this is my assumption, and well, it's my opinion, and we know what opinions are. Um, we're probably going to rally after this uh, China thing is all over. That's my guess. I mean, even if they don't do anything, they'll probably rally. I, I'm, that's the way the market's acting. I, I can't say anything more than that. Let's take a look at something quickly. I want to cover the stock indices first, but there's an interesting, uh, an interesting thing. We've got the World Federation of Wrestling, i.e., the IPO for uh, Uber is coming out today. It's getting just as much press as the uh, IWW, the International Federation of, of Wrestling, and that means there's a lot of people interested in it. But let's take a look at where we are here with the uh, lift. And this is, this is my assumption. Follow me. See if it makes any sense. We opened on this thing back in late March. It came in at 88. It's now doc, got down to 52 and change. That was the perfect A, B, C, D pattern, 52 and change. We then rallied up to 56 yesterday. We're trading at around 54 right now. Folks, this is another type of these ride-sharing deals, and Uber's going to come out. If you're going to do an IPO on this, I would buy the Lyft, and I'll tell you why. First of all, you've got a completed pattern so you can control your risk. If you buy Uber on the opening, <laughs> may, may the force be with you because that thing could do anything. My, my assumption here is that they're underpriced. They underpriced Uber. That means they're going to bump it up on the opening to get these people to put a few shekels in their pocket. But that's the way I'm looking at it. It might be totally wrong, but the fact is that with Lyft, you, you know where you are. You only have to risk two bucks a share. From 54 to just below 52. So if you're wrong, you're out two bucks. With uh, 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 with Uber, oh my God, anything could happen. Look what happened to to Lyft. It went from 88 to, to uh, 88 to 66 on the first day. So uh, you don't want to get it caught. This way, you can control your risk. Anyway, Monday. We will look at it to see how it turned out, to see if I have more egg on my face than I usually do, but let's pay a little bit of attention to that. Now, yesterday in the stock indices futures, if you remember, uh, we were talking about the stock indices futures. We were looking at this level down here that was very important at the uh, 2835 level. You'll notice that we completed that ABCD pattern uh, quite nicely. And then what's happened so far Last night and early this morning, you'll notice if we take a look at this same thing in the E-mini S&P, we're looking at a market that could bottom around 2947. Uh, That's a completed Gartley at the 78% level. That's what it looks like. But remember this level, folks, 2830, 2835. If you'll remember, we posted the information from our good friend Rich Anderson, and that was the history of the gaps in the S&P. And you'll notice there you are. You see the very first blue line, 2836, and the last and the bottom last night was 2835. So it filled that gap. Uh, it then rallied 25 handles from there, and it's been chopping around, but it did fill that first gap. These gaps will be filled, but the $64 question is, will they be filled in my lifetime? That's what I don't know. 
it's interesting to see the news that's coming out because it is uh, relatively negative, and they say there could be a deal, there could be a deal. Yeah, that's uh, if you believe that. Oh, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge, but that's just my opinion. That that's neither here nor there. Uh, just remember that. That's all it's about. I want to cut. We have Bill Meridian as our guest at the half hour, and he asked to come on, folks. And that means he's got some really good information because when Bill has something, uh, you want to pay attention to him. So he just got back from Saudi Arabia, and he's got some what he thinks is important information for us. So that'll be at the half hour. We all always enjoy. Uh, seeing him. Uh, we want to talk a, just a little bit more uh, about the Bitcoin because it's still starting to rally. We're, we're above the uh, 60,000 uh, 60, 6, level and uh, we could easily uh, continue to go higher. We're waiting for a correction in the Bitcoin to see what that next level is going to be. We do not trade this instrument. We don't plan on trading it, but we do follow it because it's in the news and cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology appear to be something that's going to be very important in the future. That's not coming for me. I was the one that was not sure about color television sets until 1983. I wasn't sure about microwave ovens until last year. So I'm a little behind the curve when it comes to these long-term trends. So keep an eye on what the prices are doing. That'll give you an idea of what some of the stuff is uh, going on. Okay, now let's take a quick look here at one other thing that we want to look at. Uh, that I think is uh, is very important today, and that is the wh when you got to know when you're wrong on these things, folks. I want to show you this chart on the uh, on the live the live cattle. You'll see here the live cattle. We thought there was going to be a bottom at the 61% retracement. We went through that like melted butter. We went through the 78% retracement like melted butter. That's why when you when you're trading these things, folks, you've got to determine how much you're going to risk. And, uh, you know, in cattle, you don't have to risk more than a penny, penny and a half, which is between four and $600. But if you'd have bought it at the 61% retracement at 111, now it's trading at 107, you're sitting there with a $2,400 loss. And not only that, but it destroys your trading soul. And that's what the key is. You know, you just take the small loss, move on. That's, uh, that's flat out the bottom line, what you're looking for. So that's what I... The bay. Oh, someone's asking a question about getting the money out of China. Uh, you know, we go to Hong Kong several times a year, and uh, that is a, it's a big deal over there, folks, is uh, how they get money out of China. Uh, the easiest way they do it is to just bring cash over the border, and that can be done. The biggest real estate deal for a single-family home was done last year in Hong Kong up on Victoria Peak, which is the nicest place in all of Hong Kong. It's at the top of the mountain. You can see Macau, China. Uh, about 300 of the islands. I mean, it's just, it's just so spectacular. It's usually above the clouds. And uh, that home was uh, 5,500 square feet, four, bed, four bedroom, five bath, three car garage, swimming pool and tennis court, went for a cool 450 million U.S. dollars for a 5,500 square foot house. And it was paid for in cash brought in on pallets. They actually had pictures of those things. I probably should go in and Google them, but uh, it took about four big pallets to bring the cash in, but it was sold for cash. U.S. money. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a sequence of charts from the Japanese yen U.S. dollar cross rate pointing out the double top that we had at that 78.6 level. We've now come down and touched the exact 382, taking out last week's low and not going anywhere. To me, I interpret that as there were not there was not any sell orders below that level. And so I'm assuming the 382 level is going to hold as long as we stay above that uh, 99 uh, level, I think this has got a possibility uh, to rally. We've been in a very tight rating, trading range here, but it still looks like it has the possibility to go a little bit higher. The key that I'm watching on the foreign currencies is the U.S. dollar and the euro because they're mirror images of each other. The euro is trading at 112.40 right now. In order to get the trend sharply higher in the euro, it needs to get above 112.90 to 113. And above 113, it is flat bullish on the euro and bearish on the U.S. dollar. Uh, I had a little, uh, little, well, I guess it was a little test this week on the uh, the importance of what was happening uh, with the U.S. dollar. And uh, fortunately, I had several people that uh, did their homework. And I'll share share with you what we were watching here. If you look at this U.S. dollar index on a long-term weekly chart, you notice here that last week we went up and we made a perfect 61% retracement there at that 98.10 level, and uh, the market immediately turned down. We're now one handle below that already. We're trading at 97.10 right now. That means to me that this is most probably a very important inflection point. Now, if you'll bear with me for just a moment, Let's go into our memory bank and take a look at this chart that we're looking at, the U.S. dollar index. If you look at the far left over there in 2015, look at that as the left shoulder. Then look at the head that occurred in December of 2016, and where we are now could be the right shoulder, and it is much lower than the left shoulder, right at a 61% retracement level. Folks, if that's correct, this thing could really have a bad day in here and start down quite a bit. On the second hand, if we get above 98.10 now, again, after this pretty good correction we've had, that will tell us that we're going to be going higher in the U.S. dollar and lower in the euro. I am still bearish the euro, but we might get one heck of a rally out of here 
uh, if it, these levels uh, continue to hold. Right now, all it's doing is just bouncing around between 111.10 and 113 in the euro, and that's you know really what we're watching. We've had several questions about the grains, folks. The grains are still in the sewer. In fact, is they're really in the sewer? Even even December corn, which has tried to hold up, is still uh, at a major A B C D pattern with no takers. So every everybody in the grain trade is scared to death about what's going to happen. Farmland prices have actually dropped a lot during this thing, so I know El Presidente is not going to be happy with the, the farmers, how they're going to respond to him uh, come election day, but uh, that's the this is the real world. So uh, pay attention, because when these things do turn, they are going to turn with a vengeance. And so far, the vengeance is theirs, not ours, so we got to pay attention to it. We tried one time about two weeks ago nibbling at the bonds or with the beans with about a $200 loss, and that was the smartest thing to do. The smarter thing to do was to go short at that time, but then the risk on that was a little bit more than I wanted to take. That brings us to another question that someone brought to us last night, and that is, do I reverse when these patterns fail? And the answer is no. And the reason for that is I'm not a very good reversal type trader. It's just ingrained in my uh, psychic. I, I move on and go to the next patterns. What I'll do if that pattern returns bearish, then I'll look, to, look at it to go short, but I don't reverse. The other question, we'll finish up here with this gold and then we'll we'll go on to a couple other things. Uh, I was extremely bullish gold at the 1255 to 1260 level. We have not got to that level yet. I still believe that we have a chance to get down there. And the reason for that is silver has an outstanding target of $14.40 per ounce. We're trading at $14.78 and $14.80 and change or something like that this morning. But if we can get that silver down there and gold to come down to that level, then that's going to put all the numbers together. Right now, I see little bits and pieces, but they're not they're not tradable for uh, – or any significant amount. I mean, they can trade five or ten cents in the uh, we, uh, in silver, but uh, that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in something much larger. If we can catch that, and we've done some big gold trades recently. They all turned out extremely well, but this one it just has not done it. I mean, we've not got a valid signal. We've got some signals, but they haven't turned out to make anything. The best they could do is break even. So. You know, it's you just got to wait. Remember, being a trader is like being a doctor. You have to have patience. Okay, let's move on to uh, one other one that some folks have asked about. I've already covered the lift. Yes, I did. Okay, I covered that. I covered that. Covered that. Oh, it was about the uh, crude oil. Let's just get this up here. want to see it because I think crude oil has had a chance here. Uh, we got back up to that 6285. That makes that a 135 pattern. We're now trading below 6200. I believe any move below 6090 in the crude oil is going to send this thing into a spiral to the downside. And, and on the second part of this, if it gets above $63 a barrel, I would think that this would be a pretty good bottom in in crude oil. We could go a lot higher. But the thing is, we made that bottom two days ago, folks, and it's gone nowhere. That's not a very good sign if you're bullish. Uh, so there's a lot of resistance up here at that 6250 level in uh, July crude oil. So that's another one that is uh, uh, on the watch list uh, that should be uh, closely watched. Now, t today's Friday, folks. There's no reason in the world to try to buy grains today. I mean, sh if you want to, you know, that's certainly up to you. But, you know, your risk is going to have to be quantified that, they could open a whole lot lower on Monday morning if something happens that uh, these these Chinese talks get worse than they already are. So I, I don't need to take that risk. I don't think you do either, but if you're that type of person, then do it. If you want to take a risk, look at that lift. The lift is trading at 54. They're going to bring out supposedly Uber at 45. That means it's going to open a lot higher than that. But if Uber, Uber doesn't open higher than 45, that's going to be a failed IPO. And this is their banner, folks. This is the this is the flagship of the IPOs. They've been waiting on this for weeks and months. So I don't think these boys on Wall Street are going to let this thing go down. But what do I know? We'll have to be able to see. Okay, Maria is going along the ES here. So if there's any problems, give her a call. Her number is... 213-555-1178. Uh, so remember, 212-555-1178.
I think she has a recorded message on there, but I'm not sure. Folks, that is a bogus phone number. I hope you realize that, all right? 555. <laughs> 555 is the movie numbers that you always get when they give movie numbers uh, in the thing. Only There's been a few times where they actually have given the actual phone numbers out, which has always been a lot of, lot of a problem, but uh, we'll have to worry about that. Now, there's a there's a commodity. Of, oh, I don't have time to do it. I wanted to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'll give them your Western Union code number too. Uh, it's princess.com, isn't it, Maria? Okay, Sarah says hi to you, Maria. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors Investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back and we're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, uh, Vienna, Austria, just back from Saudi Arabia. Bill, how are you? Uh, okay, but I was in Abu, I was in Abu Dhabi. Oh, sorry about that. I get that Middle East stuff all mixed up all the time. <laughs> sorry, my friend. So you were you were in Dubai okay. in Abu Dhabi, yeah? Okay. That is, yes. Where did Bob? You, uh, Bill, you worked in Saudi Arabia though, didn't you? It's when you worked uh, over there, those seven or eight years, uh, eleven years, Abu, whatever it was. Abu Dhabi, for fourteen years. Fourteen years. Wow. I know that was. Uh, Abu I Dhabi, remember when. Not Saudi Arabia. Yeah. 
Wow. Tell the folks what you did there, Bill. Tell, tell them because you were you 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 were an analyst. I know that, and you did some you did trading also, but you did a fabulous job. But can no, you have I time? I was a portfolio for... manager and strategist. Okay. So I worked in the North American Bond and Equity Department, and I did the market forecasting for them for 10 years, and I ran the technology portfolio 90, late 91 through 2000. And at the end of that time, I switched to external management. I was there for the last three or four years. Uh-huh. Is it still, is and that operation today, still everybody going? Who, everybody who is 25 years old is now 45, 50 retiring or is some sort of a governor of the central bank, minister of the economy. Yeah. And so I go down from time to time to say hello, get a holiday and a suntan and find out yeah. what's going on from their perspective. Wow. Do you have any information from, from that uh, perspective right now? What's going on? I mean, you got a lot of, you got a Ramco's coming out with uh, that big thing. And plus that Khashoggi thing just blew over, didn't it? Nobody even talks about it anymore. Well, that, things like that they don't talk about. We talk mostly about um, business and politics, but uh, the economy there has been very slow for two years. I was there 15 months ago, and they had just laid off of about over 200,000 people in the UAE alone. But property prices are now down 40% from the 2014 high. You can buy in Abu Dhabi right now a two-bedroom apartment for 700,000 dirham, which is uh, about $200,000. For one million dirhams, you can get a three-bedroom townhouse that's got an attached garage, and that's about, um, oh, let me see, that's about $300,000. Wow. Um, so your, the economy is very slow. The Abu Dhabi Investment Authority has reduced their headcount from 1,900 to 1,400. When I was there, it was 1,200. And the institutions in the Middle East are themselves selling out of Middle Eastern markets. They're saying they haven't made any money. The markets have gone sideways. So they're selling their own markets. Maybe that's a contrary <laughs> opinion buy signal, but yeah. I don't really know if it is. And the major concerns are Iran and Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia, the relaxing rules, they have cinemas, women are allowed to drive, travel restrictions have been dropped. And this has hurt Dubai because people could easily get to Dubai and Bahrain, but now they can go other places. They can stay home or they can go other places. The yeah. new ruler, is Salman, is very popular with the young people, but not with the old traditional people because he's relaxing everything too much. And my local friends told me there's even some talk of uh, permitting the consumption of alcohol in, uh, for expats wow. in uh, Saudi Arabia, as they do in uh, Abu Dhabi. So, But I think that's a way down the road. And um, the UAE is... Uh, well, you know, when I was there, I warned the young guys. I said, when oil prices go and rally, you know, up to seventy to a hundred dollars, and they all told me, no, no, it'll never get above thirty-five because we'll just pump more oil. I said, you can't pump enough oil to satisfy India and, and uh, China. So anyway, I said, when that happens, I hope you don't go go wild. <laughs> excuse me, go wild with big spending projects, <clears throat> which is what they did. So when they say oil prices are too low, <clears throat> excuse me. What they're saying is that we uh, plan projects that are too big. And so now they're cutting back. Even though the hotel vacancy rate is 50%, they're still building. But some wiser gents have shuttered projects, so you see idle construction projects. And um, <clears throat> they're really starting now to re, uh, reassess their spending. Wow. And um, they've been supporting... Uh, countries for many years, and they're getting tired of doing it because it's like if you put somebody on welfare, they don't have much incentive to get off of it. And so uh, <laughs> they warned me that it's not in the headlines yet, but they said keep your eyes on Jordan and Morocco. They said they feel from their standpoint that these countries are very unstable. And of mm -hmm. course, the ones that are already uh, uh, the ones that are already in the news, um, uh, Algeria. You know, they're having riots there, but they have a very strong – they're not going to be trouble there because if you come across the border, uh, you're unauthorized and you're walking across the border, they order you to stop once before they shoot. So that's why they don't have any problems. Oh. But um, – and I haven't been there. I was there three years ago, but my uh, – the group that I – you know, the, the people that I go see, they, they visit there regularly. And uh, they're a little concerned about their projects there. And uh, next year, of course, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in January will be very close to the Saudi sun. 
And as soon as it finishes <clears throat> the Saudi sun, it'll transit over Jupiter in the ascendant. So this is the same situation I, I mentioned of Pluto going over Jupiter in the horoscope of China. So I think they're headed for, uh, I think there may be an attempt to remove this young ruler from power uh, next year, uh, January, anywhere, anywhere between November and January. And after that, uh, I think they have a financial crisis similar to that of China, and that's another cause of this 2020 to 2022 pullback that I'm seeing. And okay. uh, there were there were people there from um, uh, Sudan, and I had mentioned it was in Del Horoscope and it was up on YouTube that uh, this eclipse coming up at 10 degrees Cancer was right opposite the sun of the ruler of the country, and it was on the day that the guy took power. So I had written in a 2019 forecast that I thought he would fall from power, and of course he did. Um, so the people from Sudan, they just said, we took care of that, and they wouldn't talk about it any further. Uh, but yeah. my, uh, my uh, host there, there was a book fair, so there were many scholars from uh, India, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and then it was Ramadan. And so Ramadan, of course, he has to sit in the majlis and receive visitors every night, and so you, you don't know who you're going to meet. Uh, wow. there, were, there, were, uh, there were American engineers in there uh, building projects in the Maldives, and they're looking for investment and so on. So, Bill, do you have to follow religious uh, protocol? Like when you meet someone over there, that uh, you have to do you have to uh, be on a prayer mat, or do you have to wear anything different, or how do you greet them? Do they shake hands, or you know, I, I shake hands with yeah. all my Muslim yeah. friends. I, that's what I thought, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. No, there's no. Uh, you know, I got there in 1990. I didn't knew very little of anything, and. Uh, they're very, very. Uh, they're trained throughout that region to be very superb hosts. So they're very understanding. Oh, yeah, if you yeah, make a that, mistake, yes. forgive yeah. you. And, yeah. and uh, you know, we used to in 1990. Everybody would sit on the floor and they invite me for dinner. I said, "Do you want us to get you a chair and a fork and a knife?" I said, "No, you know, I'll eat with you guys." And if they scooped the food up with their hands, and they were trying to yeah. teach me to do it, I kept dropping it, which amused everybody. Um, <laughs> Bill, you're Italian. That that comes natural. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So what what are they doing now with their investments, Bill? Are they uh, focusing on Aramco or? Well, I, I haven't heard anybody talk about Aramco, but they're. Um, as I said, hey, so we got to we got to pay a few bills. Could you stay with us yeah. for another segment? Yeah. Thanks, Bill yeah, Meridian Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria, folks. Right back eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. We're back with Bill Meridian Cycles Research. Bill, I have a question from one of our listeners out of uh, Philadelphia. He says, didn't the MBS dispose of their competitors in the second half of 2017? I'm sorry, what does the acronym stand for? The, the MBS. I don't know what MBS stands for. I was supposed to ask this verbatim, and that's what I'm doing. It says, the question for Bill, did not heir apparent MBS already dispose of his competitors in the second half of 2017? The Saudi young ruler, I guess that's his handle that they use, oh, MBS. Oh, uh, so, um, yeah, from what I've heard, some of them yeah. he did, but um, – yeah. I think you know there are elements outside the country that they have to be careful of because the, uh, it's a very most of those countries are very traditional. Abu Dhabi is not. Abu Dhabi is very yeah. relaxed. The UAE is very relaxed, and so is yeah. Oman. Uh -huh. Is is Kuwait still a factor over there? I mean, they still have a. I have several friends over in Kuwait that still like it, but I don't know how how political it is or anything, so I don't really know that much about it. Do you ever get over there? Yeah, well, that that. No, I haven't been there in, I think, six years. And um, as far as I'm concerned, most people are concerned about Iran and making money. And um, <laughs> you know, I was at the economy is very slow. You go outside the Abu Dhabi Mall, you usually have to wait for a taxi, and uh, there mm -hmm. was no waiting line. And I went, and most of the restaurants were fairly empty. And so uh, they are really hurting there. And apparently Amazon is very popular, so it's really hurting the retail and uh, the financial institutions, well, I could write a book about this, but I'm not going to bother. I went there in 1990. They wanted somebody who had fundamental and technical experience. They wanted to take into account market movements more. So I did that. I successfully ran the technology sector of the portfolio. And I mean, to give you an example, they called me up to the managing director's office, the guy at the top, and he had hired these two guys, one who's an Arab who didn't know anything, and the other guy who'd been fired from all his jobs due to the poor performance of his portfolios, who's now a friend of mine, he's an Englishman. And um, why is the department not doing well? And I said, well, 58% of the market cap of this six, $7 billion portfolio is invested in stocks with declining relative strength versus the benchmark, which we're supposed to beat. To this day, I don't think they still understood, I, I don't think they understood what I said. <laughs> I said, if, if outperforming the market is one, uh, outperforming the S&P is one of the primary, that's our objective, then before you buy a stock, it should have positive relative strength. That, you know, if it has negative relative strength, that means the rest of the world disagrees with your positive view of the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And you should at least, excuse me, ask yourself why. And when they asked me why I was doing well compared to everybody else, I said, well, I have 35 stocks down from 52, and 30 have positive relative strength, not only versus the S&P, but versus the S&P technology index, which is what I'm measured against. And this just sort of flew over, over everybody's head. And well, what about <laughs> the fundamentals? I said, well, you know, you're not being paid for book value per cubic centimeter or, you know, <laughs> uh, you, 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 so, 
<laughs> were being paid on uh, on relative strength, and they still don't get it. So they eventually they were giving up. As the director of the central bank said, my old friend Mubarak, he said, "Well, look all the trouble we had here." I said, "Well, Mubarak, you had trouble because you're not listening to the market. That's why you hired me." So I tell you what the market tells me, and everybody says, "Well, Bill's trying to tell everybody what to do." I said, "No, I'm telling you what the market's telling me." Yeah. And um, and so anyway, this is still very pervasive. I said, I went to uh, NYU for a BS and for an MBA. Stern School is now one of the best known schools in the in, on the planet, and uh, we got the relative strength got like 15 to 30 minutes of treatment. 15 to 30 minutes. The guy's, well, bro, wow. I think there's this, but you don't know how long it's going to last. So I as well, has anybody ever done any studies like that? Well, now they have to some degree. And I have a young guy who's a PhD, China, Chinese from Hong Kong, met me at Rutgers. I got a call. He said, can I take you to lunch? I said, yeah, sure. And I went to New York and he said, I want to thank you. He said, you were really right. What you said about relative strength. I said, yeah, he said, I got a job with Prudential Securities and they've also made me a prof I'm an assistant professor at Stevens here where he graduated from. He said, but you were right. He says, that's exactly what the big institution wants to know. And you suggested a lot of studies. I'm surprised. Why hasn't all this stuff been implemented? I said, that's a good question. I said, I'll make a prediction. When you hit my age, 70, you're going to be asking yourself the same thing. Of course, it, it just never sinks in. So, <laughs> that was. Are you still there? there but they're they're oh. largely seventy to eighty percent of the funds are indexed, but they do no market timing. Mm -hmm. So they get caught at every top, and uh, you know. Anyway, what are you seeing in the U.S. stock market right now, Bill? I know we 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 showed the folks your well, cycles that you're yeah, looking I, at, so. Yeah, well, the uh, I had a turning point, I think, projected for the third, but the market, I, I think, actually topped on the first. And uh, so I got a little thrown by this, and I was traveling. And, you know, when you're not sitting in front of the screen, it has an effect. You lose your feel. So anyway, on Monday, the market came down. It rallied, you know, it was down 50. Then it was only down 13. So I waited another day. And finally, by Wednesday, Thursday, uh, my next projected turning point after the third is the 20th. And the only conclusion I can come to is that we're down into the 20th. And uh, <clears throat> to give you an example, I just looked at the uh, AAII investors poll, which just um, on the uh, May 5th, it went from 33 and a half bulls to 39, and it dropped 46 percent bears to 39.6. That is a very big one week drop. And if you've got a turning point and you're headed up, that's telling you, telegraphing to you, unless you're traveling. Um, that the market's probably headed down. So I just took the numbers down from last night. We went from 39% bulls to 43.1, and from 39.6% bears to 33.7. After the week we've had, after those three days, the number of bulls has gone up. And you know, Larry, sentiment is if you're not bearish enough, the market's going to decline enough until you get very bearish. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is uh, adding fuel to the fire here. And... Um, as for price levels, I think I sent you that uh, that chart. If you just look at normal retracement levels of the yes. December to April rally, and also the um, the most recent rally, March up through late April. And mm -hmm. if you look at retracement levels, uh, the first retracement level that I see that's common to both is at 28.05. Yep, and the one That's below correct. that is about 2720. But I think 2805 is probably going to hold, and we'll probably hit that level by May 20th, which is only 10 days away. Mm -hmm. And with this kind of volatility, it could be there this afternoon. You never know. <laughs> How about the situation for our El Presidente, DJT? What's going on? Well, it's is like I said. I see. Um, it's. Um, there's uh, the eclipse in January opposed the sun in the horoscope of the beginning of the investigation, which means it knocked it down. But the next eclipse is on the sun. Uh, and so we've got, to, as I said, they left enough nuggets spread in the Mueller report, which is actually, even though the Democrats are screaming that they should release the whole thing, it was the Democrats who passed the law saying that you cannot release the whole thing for security reasons. So what they did is they made it available. There's a room in the Senate or in the Congress in Washington where you can go in, uh, the Democrats or Republicans can go in and read it. And thus far, two Republicans have gone in to read it and no, no Democrats. So it is available to them. So all the screaming is a lot of nonsense, and they're trying to 
uh, now they're attacking Barr because if Barr follows the law, he can put a lot of these people in jail because uh, Comey knew that the uh, the um, information he gave the FISA court was false. He gave it to them anyway, so he's liable, and they're they're now attacking Barr. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, my friend. I really like talking to you, Bill. So have a safe May, and hopefully we'll have you on towards sure. the end of May. Thanks a lot, folks. Bill Meridian, sure. Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. Just go to cyclesresearch.com. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. One of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the weekly chart of the E-mini S&P showing you that rounding top one, three, one, two, three pattern. And um, so far with the big down move we had, we closed at 29.50. We're now trading at 28.60. That's down about 100 handles uh, in one week. And uh, the importance of that low at 28.30 cannot be underestimated. That was the gap on the, the daily chart, the very first profit objective. We hit that. We've rallied a little bit. It's very important that we stay above that today. Uh, if it doesn't, you know, the stocks are going to be down big time today, and that means on Monday it's not going to look very good regardless of what the news is. But as we know, last Sunday the news changed overnight, and the market gapped down on Monday. 
So there's always a possibility that something crazy would happen. However, all of these indices that we're looking at, the transportation, utilities, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, every single one of them is in a topping or a divergence pattern. That's not a good sign for long term. That long term could only be two or three weeks. What we're watching to see is what our first 38% retracement is in this move. And that comes in at around 2,500, I believe, in the E-mini S&P. So uh, there's a long way to go just to get to the 382, excuse me, that's 2650 in the S&P, not 2550. But anyway, that's uh, one of the things that we're watching to see what that correction would be. Regarding the bonds, I believe we've got a chance one more time to push the bonds up to maybe 149.10, 149.15, and then we'll roll over from that level, which is the 78% level. Uh, keep an eye on that Japanese yen. has a lot of support at that 109.40 uh, level. We're trading about 20, hand, 20 points above that. So if it can stay above 109.40, it has a very bullish bias. But if we go below 109.40 in that dollar yen, that would be a very, very negative sign and would tell us that we're most probably going to go a lot lower in that 78% level where it made a double top at uh, the, the 113 and change means that it's there for quite a while. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.